Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Well, the midnight Thursday deadline set by Deontay Wilder for Anthony Joshua to accept his $50 million offer, it's come and gone. So where does that leave things? Well, given some of what's been said in this quickly evolving situation, negotiations are in a very precarious state. Since the Take It or Leave It $50 million offer was sent by Deontay Wilder from his personal email account and then broadcast to the world by Wilder on his social media platforms, the battle to win over public opinion, it's been waged by both sides in a very deliberate way. They want to win the war of public opinion. First, we had Anthony Joshua tweeting, let's roll. Then we had Eddie Hearn talking down the offer questioning its validity and calling it a PR stunt, suggesting blindly accepting the purse split without the key details behind it isn't something that he'd really be prepared to do. He needed to see more. He needed to sit down, go through exactly what was being proposed. And Hearn was quoted as saying, I spoke to AJ. He knows the situation, but we want to know it's real. We want to see the money and know where it is. There is a real strong chance this fight could happen. We're not looking to be difficult. But the suggestion from Hearn that the offer was nothing more than a mere stunt, smoke and mirrors, it's prompted Shelley Finkel, Wilder's co-manager, to respond to Hearn directly. So he emailed Hearn, and then later the correspondence was shared with BoxingScene.com. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of both sides are desperate to win the war of public opinion. This sort of exemplifies it. So Hearn, he was talking publicly, and then Finkel's releasing emails. So it reads, Dear Eddie, with all due respect, you know Al and I for a long time, and you know this is not a publicity stunt. I assure you that we are serious, and we'd be glad to sit down with you and provide proper security for the funding, and work out all the details. But it has to start with Anthony Joshua accepting the $50 million offer he asked for, which is also by far the largest guarantee and largest person any heavyweight champion in history has ever made. Until then, it would be non-productive to meet. Please have Anthony accept the offer that he asked for, and let's get this fight made. Thanks, Shelley. And you can imagine Eddie Hearn, he wasn't going to let that lie. So in response to that, Hearn told Boxing Scene again, unless their offer is a complete bluff, they have to meet me. Otherwise, they will look like fools. We haven't had an offer yet. All we have is a piece of paper from a guy from Alabama. So let's see a contract. Let's see the proof of funds. Let's see what we have to do and what our obligations are to earn that kind of money. If it's real, we have to look at it, and it's something that's of interest. But if they expect us to make a decision and accept the fight today based on a piece of paper from, as I said, a guy from Alabama, then they are wildly mistaken. In the bottom of my heart, I feel it's a PR move. But because my job and my obligations, and they say it's a lot of money, we have to investigate it. And if it's real, it's of interest, subject to what we have to do. Anthony has world-class contracts that obviously we have to adhere to. Anthony would like some involvement, some control in the show, because he is the A-side. We want to know where it is. Not it will be wherever you told it to be. It doesn't work like that. So there's a lot to discuss but we want to discuss it. Then to round out the day, at about 8 o'clock New York time, that's PM, Wilder again took to social media. Bro, bro, there's been a lot of misinterpretation. So I want a bit of better communication for this situation. Now, I offer you 50 million. It's in the bag. And you replied, let's do it. So for public record, for a better understanding, so we understand what you were saying. I gotta go back to elementary with this. Anthony Joshua, do you accept my offer? Yes or no? That's all I need to know. Okay, so there's been a lot going on here. It's been quite a fast evolving situation. So where are we right now? Well, as I see it, we're in a stalemate of sorts. The Wilder side, it is unwilling to provide details until they get a yes from Joshua. 
And the Joshua side, conversely, is unwilling to say yes until they get more details. So there's kind of, you know, something's got to give. They're clearly wanting something from the other, which the other is not prepared to give at this point. But what is clear, though, from this whole situation, you know, going back just over a day, this was a major power move from the Wilder side in a number of respects. They set a really strong narrative in the media with their bold and record offer for a heavyweight purse, $50 million guaranteed. They also managed to deftly use Anthony Joshua's previous comments that he'd signed for $50 million. They used it against him. And the fact that Joshua had said, offer me that, I'll sign tomorrow. And now that he hasn't signed and it's already been tomorrow, that's a little bit of a problem in itself. And one that won't be able to be completely explained away by Eddie Hearn. I mean, short Hearn, he makes some very valid points about the perils of agreeing to a person flying blind on the rest. But the fact is, at Team Wilder, they've gone after Joshua's integrity, they've taken him at his word with the statements, and you've had Wilder even saying, are you a man of your word? They have managed to box Joshua in here a bit. And the fact that Joshua has said, let's roll, when the offer was first announced, that also sort of adds into it. It's hard to ignore. So the whole situation, it can be sort of characterized as the clear B sign, because that's what De Deontay Wilder is pulling a big A-side type move. And one of the few tactics that Eddie Hearn's been able to employ in response is ridicule. He's been attacking the offer, he's been attacking the credibility of those involved, and really just downplaying the whole thing. In terms of what he could do, I don't think there is much more that he could do except come back with a better offer. But that will actually be very hard to do, because Eddie Hearn has already capped Deontay Wilder's value at $12.5 million in the opening offer. Now we've had this counter, which is $50 million guaranteed for Joshua. I don't know really what where Hearn could go. I mean, the percentage option is an option, but actually, I think it's clear that Deontay Wilder camp, they want the fight, they want control, they want to take it out of the hands of Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua. They want to have the fight in America, they want to have Joshua in a situation he's not familiar with, that he doesn't have control over the card, over all the details, they want to have the control. And I'm sure that Team Wilder see that as a big plus and a big edge for Deontay Wilder should the fight get made. So, you know, I'm sure Eddie Hearn, he is a little worried about that. I'm sure he doesn't want Anthony Joshua not having a say in some of these things. But ultimately, if the money is that big, they may just have to take it. But will they take it? And that's the thing. And it's been clear to me what Eddie Hearn's been doing, the sort of attacks and such. It's had some limited success. But to be honest, it's only going to reaffirm the views of the respective fans. So Joshua fans, they will completely agree with Hearn. And Wilder fans, they will not. And I've seen some quite hysterical, shroud-waving type comments in my comment section from the last video from both sides. Some of it is completely and utterly ridiculous. And some of the comments that do not make it through because they hit the filter, don't make it through because of bad language and such like that, they don't bear repeating because some of them are quite despicable. I think people need to take a step back here and go, this is a negotiation. How much do you really have invested in these guys? They're boxers. Sure, you may be a fan of one or the other, but are you really going to die on your shield for them? I mean, come on, just, you know, if you're one of these people going crazy about the situation... Really just, you know, examine what's going on and go, do I need to be so invested in all this? Some of it does, you know, it goes, it is beyond the pale. But I do see a misstep here from the Wilder side. One of the few that they've made since this $50 million offer has been made. And that is the calling off of the meeting with Eddie Hearn. So I don't think it's unrealistic or unreasonable of Eddie Hearn to actually seek a meeting. The fact that he's in New York, he's ready, he's willing to meet, ready to roll, and he's been told, no thanks. And this is just after Anthony Joshua's received a $50 million offer. It's actually not a good look for Finkel and Heyman. Holding the meeting, actually, it gives the offer more credence, more credibility, and it allows the public to at least believe that they're negotiating in good faith that actually things are happening behind closed doors. Whether that's a reality or not, we wouldn't know. But 
If they're meeting, that's always a good sign because they're talking and that's where the real work happens. But I did also have a comment that suggested in my last comment section that regardless of the situation, Deontay Wilder, because he's made such a big offer for the biggest fight that can be made at heavyweight and potentially in all of boxing, that he comes out looking pretty good out of all of this, regardless of what happens. That he'll continue to pick up fans because of his actions and because he's been so bold and sort of come out with this big offer that, you know, none of us really saw coming. And I do think there is something in that. So it will be very interesting to see where it all goes because Team Wilder has stolen a bit of a march here on this one. They are on the front foot in this situation, in my eyes at least. And in part, that is because it has been a PR stunt. The media and social media has been used quite deftly to push their message. They broke the news. It was like a bomb. It took over all the boxing sites, forums, comments. Everyone's been talking about it. It's been engulfing all of boxing. But just because, you know, part of it has been a successful PR-driven sort of uh, stunt, as Eddie Hearn called it, that doesn't mean that the offer is not real. Eddie Hearn, he really needs to come back with something good. He needs to hit back hard. Otherwise, if they do walk away from the situation, an offer of $50 million, and that's guaranteed money with upside if the fight does really well, then no matter the number of excuses or reasons and that sort of thing, it will come off as all a bit weak. And it will certainly give Wilder the oxygen to keep talking smack about Anthony Joshua. And I fully believe that Anthony Joshua, he wants this fight. He wants to get a deal done. He doesn't want to be bent over a barrel. But I'm sure he won't also want to be put into a position where his integrity is in in question, where his heart is questioned. Because ultimately, that could hurt his reputation in some way, shape or form. And I think we saw it before Christmas last year in those couple of months up in the lead up to Christmas, that sustained campaign by Deontay Wilder It did land a few blows then, and Anthony Joshua started to act a little bit out of character. There were a number of things that happened, you'll recall them, or you can go back and look. And actually, there were a few little chinks in the armour there. But I'm still of the view that Anthony Joshua, he wants this fight. Eddie Hearn, I'm not so convinced about, but that's because he's the promoter. He wants to look after all the, you know, dotting of the I's, crossing of the T's. He wants to make sure that his fighter, who is the A-side, is in the pole position. I can't blame him for that. But at the same time, I mean, Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn, they're playing hardball, as is Shelley Finkel and Al Heyman. We've got this impasse. Somebody needs to swallow their pride or ego, make a move to get everyone in the room. I don't know what that is at this stage because it looks like they're pretty firm on the position that either more details need to come or an offer needs to be accepted. That's where the line is at the moment. But they do need to do something soon, because the Povetkin mandatory, it is looming. A purse bid will be held in the next two weeks or so. So we have a timeline, a finite timeline where a deal can be done. Be a shame if they can't get together, get those assurances, and draw up a contract that they can both live with. So really, I mean, I just hope they get this thing made. It will start to get pretty tired pretty quickly. I mean, it's been a little bit exciting the last couple of days with this new news, but this is going to blow over pretty quickly and we'll be back to the status quo where nothing much is happening and it's all getting a bit boring and tiresome. I hope they can get it done. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often and respectful. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.